As we begin um, this Sunday morning's message, first of all, we want to extend a warm welcome. First of all, we thank each and every one for being here at Highest Praise this morning. And for those that are viewing us live um, on the web or on our television programs, we want to thank you as well for tuning in to this Highest Praise Tabernacle service. And we'd like to take the opportunity to invite you to come join us. If you're looking for a church that's plain and simple, we believe in doing it God's way, and God's way is the Word's way. And you'd love to be a part of that. We'd love for you to be a part of it as well. Come join us. We'd love to have you. Now, a lot of you were here on Wednesday, and we talked about, well, Wednesday was Valentine's Day. Well, I had my other message all laid out, and, and uh, you know, just ready to go at it, and everything was set in stone, I thought. But then... Tragedy hits, and the Lord brought back to me so many things, and I said, well, Lord, I kind of already preached on that on Wednesday night. I said, uh, I kind of like we'll go in a different direction, but this was kind of like the same message, but it's a little bit different. Um, it is dealing with the same scriptures about love. I think uh, love is so important. I think we're living in a world, well, I, I don't have to think. I know that we're living in a world that is missing love. Amen. Now, how do I know this? Because love didn't kill 17 children the other day. Amen. Love is not where terrorists is, is, is destroying the United States in so many places. Love is not getting people where they're so afraid to go out their doors or go anywhere. There's no love in that. Amen. And um. This message is actually entitled, A Time to Love. Some of you here on Wednesday night, you're going to say, I remember some of this. Good, you, hopefully you'll get a double dose of it, and, and you'll go share more love than you know what to do with. Amen. Amen. Anybody just, just got too much love and don't know what to do with it? <laughs> we all could use some more. Amen. I want to, if you will... Take and turn with me to, in your Bibles to Ecclesiastes 3.8. Again, this is the same scripture, but I'm praying that this open our eyes to some things that we really need to see before it's too late. There's always a statement in Ecclesiastes 3.8. They said something so important in the, the first four words of 8 was a time. Time. And that's time. Time runs out. You know that? Time runs out. This is a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Now, the reason why that scripture is so important to me this morning, because, see, love is in a vitally important word of God. This Bible is love. Sometimes it might be tough love, but it's love. It's the love of God. And I want you to know before we start this morning, so simple statements. Because church, let me tell you something. If you are operating without love, the thrill of living is gone. I, I've seen so many people that have died with anger and, and hate and bitterness. And when you witness this, you realize that they, you can't expect nothing no different if they don't have the love of Jesus in them. Church, I want you to know this morning that without love, the warmth of a blessed home is impossible. So many people don't get this, and I pray to everybody that's listening that it's operating on lust rather than the love of Jesus, wonders why their life is a mess and their family is a mess. Listen, God didn't create you to walk in the flesh. Amen. When we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we walk in spirit. And that spirit is a love spirit. I, I wish somebody would get this. I, I, all the talk shows that we've got on television, I hope all of you listening. You get on there and everybody wants to get up there and, and match you against each other. 
they want to get you up there and they want to get the family unit up there and tell it what you do wrong what you do wrong why is your child like this why is your marriage like this and and, and you know I, that's got nothing to do with Jesus Amen. we need to realize that the home operates under a spiritual love yeah. because that flesh is going to die and if you don't have the love of Jesus in you your marriage will die Somebody needs to listen this morning. God created you in his image and his likeness. He didn't, God's not flesh. He created you in his image and his likeness. And that means that you're supposed to have a spiritual love. A spiritual love that, that is not measured by the flesh emotions. Amen. Amen. A love that is measured by God's emotion. By the power of God's word. Yes, we all get older, and we all are going to get older. But what shouldn't die is what's inside of us that keeps our love alive for each other. See, church, without this kind of love, the usefulness of a church is totally gone. You give me a church that walks around with, with attitudes and, and, and all these rules and regulations and no love... I'll give you a lost and dying church because people need to feel love. I think one of the things that keeps me going through what I'm going through, uh, I, I, I know there's an era gone in our life where last year my daddy passed away and, and now my mom has passed away. And I, I, but you know what? What I see is something important. That's not the love that God wants us to hold on to. Amen. You might not believe this, but read your Bible. Spiritually, we're going to be in heaven together. Amen. Look around at you. This is our family. Yes, Lord. I have seen families that show no remorse or no compassion or anything but you can't expect that because God didn't put the flesh up here to last eternally. Amen. You give me a church that's full of loving people. That's what God wants to see. Yes. Now loving people are those that understand you when you're on the up or when you're on the down. Church families are the ones that's there for you when you mess up or when you get up. Church love is, is there that sees through the outer and looks at the inner because that's exactly what Jesus sees. See, love is what gave you and I the word of God. Why? Because Jesus died on the cross because he loved us. The greatest love. In fact, Jesus is the word. He came to this earth to die for us because he loved us. In fact, the Bible is well known as God's love letter to all his children. The cross demonstrates the power of God's love. But did you know that a church is as only as strong as the love that binds them together in their relationships? Listen, you give me a church of broken relationships... I'll give you a broken church. As I picked on my folks the other night, you give me a church where people have no problem in showing their love for each other. It's kind of hard, isn't it? I know as I held my mother last night, I thought about this. So many times when she was in the hospital, I know she weren't really happy to see me. Because she knew I was there to worry her. <laughs> Even show you, she'd look at me and sh being my mom, you have to understand old-fashioned folks. She said, Greg, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I said, I, I know you don't. And I just looked at her and smiled. And she would turn her head down because I know she felt so bad. But even though she didn't even like it, I believe inside she did. I'd go on over there and hug her, mess up her hair. 
I'd just get right on hug her, knowing that it just didn't sit well with her. <laughs> but that's all right. Because what was in me was Jesus. And Jesus was actually using me to hug her. And my point in saying this is this. We've got to move through the outer exterior in our relationships. We got to, I hope somebody in this nation is looking. If you're judging your marriage on one to tens, one day that one in ten is going to be a one. One day everything that you think you see here is going to be gone. And reality is going to set in. And if you don't have Jesus, you won't make it. Some people, even listening, I hope as you're getting married, you will get your eyes off of that 10 and get your eyes on Jesus and look and see what truly we love about each other. And it better be Jesus. You know, God's word said, and, he, and when we spoke of in Ecclesiastes, it's a time to love is the first four words, but it's a time to love. This says something so important. It says that love is God's plan. You know, you're probably thinking, why is he even here today? Why is he even preaching on love when his mother had just passed away? It's because, I'm going to tell you something. We better get back to some love because the time's running out. We got to realize that God wants to be a part of the plan. In fact, God says love is part of his plan. God wants us to understand that uh, relationships is part of his plan. He even said, you know, in, in Genesis 2.18, he, he, you know, God created us to be together and, and not to be alone. He said, and the Lord said, it is not good that a man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate for him. And the reason why that's so important, my mom and dad were married for 65 years. Did they fight? Probably like cats and dogs. When they were so old they couldn't, they just looked each other mean. My mama could look at me in the hospital and she didn't have to say a word. And I, 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 I know what you're thinking. And then she'd just go, you know, but I know one thing. God didn't expect us to live here alone. It was not good for man to be alone. So God created it. But listen, what God give man was not woman, but he give them love. He give each other's love because, listen, Eve was made from the rib of Adam. And I told my people last Wednesday night. The Adam, the rib is next to his heart. The rib also protects the heart. See, it's not the woman that God give Adam. He give him a way of showing his love toward Adam. And love is so important. The creation of Eve was the result of love and became marriage. And no doubt that Adam, as we talk even about Valentine's and love, you know, Eve was probably one of the prettiest women on earth. Somebody will get it. I bet you Adam thought she was. What do y'all think? He didn't probably say, Lord, you messed up. But he knew that she was beautiful. Because who made woman? God. God made woman. God made man. And look, it was beautiful to God. Love is what made that union beautiful. God's plan included this love. Love would move man to leave his father. You know the story and mother and, and cleave to his wife. Somebody needs to get that one all by itself. I'll preach that another day. <laughs> the close relationship would be a picture of Christ and his church. 
That's what marriage is. We need to get our eyes off the physical marriage and realize the greatest marriage of all is between us and Christ. And whenever we see that, then we can understand what the Lord said about this close relationship, how it compared the church to Christ. In fact, the Bible is very clear. And it says, a time to love. It says, love should be expressed. Now, people have taken this and gone totally off the mark. Yeah. Expressed in a godly way. Husbands are to love the wives as Christ loved what? Sure. Ephesians 5.25. We're supposed to love each other, church, the way Christ wants us to love each other, the way Christ loves us. Yes, God has given us a lot of ways to express love. And, and I, 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 I admire my wife because... When my mama was sick, Joan actually turned and looked at her and said, love you. She says, yeah, Joan. <laughs> I figured that was as close as she was going to get to I love you back. With that being said, what's wrong with saying I love you? Who's inside of you? Christ is inside of us. Do you know what Christ did? He said, I loved you with every whooping and beating he took. Christ said, I love you when they drug him all the way to the cross. Christ says, I love you. Even you're nailing me to the cross. Christ says, I love you. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And, 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 look, and then he says, it's finished. When he meant it was finished, no, he wasn't finished Sin was finished. Everything that was defeating us was finished because of one word. Love destroyed the enemy. Boy, I wish all the, all the terrorists was watching this program today. And I can tell you, I don't care whether you worship a wooden doll or somebody that looks like one. You've got to understand without the love of Jesus that that's the problem going on right now. We don't have that kind of love that because Jesus died to destroy anger, destroy war, destroy these enemies. Christ died. And if somebody could get this in this nation of ours, all we got to do is turn to Jesus. And show the love of Christ. And we would stop all this senseless stuff that's destroying us today. Can you imagine if we had a meeting among different countries and they started out saying, we love you in the name of Jesus. Can you imagine how many funerals would not be so sad if we didn't look back and say, I love you when it's too late. I know some of you are probably saying, well, preacher, we're just raised the old way. But you know what? That's the dumbest excuse I've ever heard in my life because I was raised that old way. I was raised that love was embarrassing. I was raised, you better not say it, you might get your jaws popped. But I'm going to tell you something. I learned when I met Jesus. That I had to have it. And if I had it, I had to give it. Every one of you in this church know I love you. And you know I don't mind telling you, even if I'm mad at you. I do like my wife does. I know I'm in trouble when she says, I love you, but. And I know what's coming afterwards. It's not going to be the I love you I want to hear. Because I know that she does it with her children. She'll look at them little kids and, but you know why? She says, I love you, but you're not going to do this. See, see, that's what God is telling us, church. I love you, but I'm not going to let you do this. Amen. See, love needs to be conveyed. But our example of love is what's destroying this world. You know, I, I have to, this statement, I have to say, it says, by, by our looks of love, our eyes can fade affection. Right? I never forget, and I have to share some humor on this a little bit, because 
My faith is in Jesus, not in the circumstances that I'm going through. And I know that when I think about things, Jesus puts things in my heart. Of course, he gives me a sense of humor. Of course, he had to have a sense of humor. He put me in the pulpit. (laughs) But when I think about love, I I know I'm I'm too old to be doing these things. And sometimes I just kind of, you know, people say, you know, when are you going to grow up? I said, if I got that like you, hopefully never. But um, y'all saw the commercials on television, you know, how they were doing Christmas and, and all this stuff with Valentine's and, and where the man is working in his shop and his wife is wanting a valent- uh, some diamonds. Diamonds is the women's best friends, what I heard. Is that, is that right? Okay, not very many of them really responded to that. And the men are probably amen in that statement to start with. But you know the commercial where the woman's sitting in there and she and he's doing this man's doing a crossword puzzle and she's wrote diamonds in it. And then he looks at her and he looks back at who done that. Or better yet, he's out there working in the shop and she puts up one of his mechanical uh, nuts and, and she puts it on her finger and she does like this. She's trying to give him a hint and he's looking over there and she's got this bolt from a, a car going like this. And he's... He's looking at her, and she's throwing all these hints. So he goes out and buys him a pot, a cook pot. And let me go on and give you something, you men that are thinking about buying cook pots for Christmas for your wives. (laughs) Don't do it. So he bought her a pot, and he wrapped that pot up, and he put them diamond earrings inside the pot and covered it up. And fixed it up. She opened that thing up. And I, I know that look. Doghouse for weeks. She, I could see that going on right there. And, and he just looked at her. And by the time she was trying to unwrap it, she was looking at this pot. And he done like this. He said, she, she said, boy, she broke into that pot like she was going to cook with it. <laughs> and there was her diamond earrings. So I decided to play a trick on my wife. So I went and bought this big pot. I mean, this skillet would cook for 12. And I packed that thing up in a box about this big. And I said, I, 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 put, her some, uh, 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 I put her little diamonds in there, a little, little present in there. And I put it in there and hid it. I mean, I hid it. Wrapped that thing up like it never been opened. Joan opened up that big pot. Now, I know that was bad news because, see, I bought her a crock pot one time for Christmas. That was not a good Christmas for Greg, I'm going to tell you. I think I got me something else that next Christmas that reminded me of cooking. An electric frying pan. And that, and that wasn't a good thing. But I did. I watched her open that big box. And she had, my wife, you got to understand her. She says, oh, <laughs> a frying pan. <laughs> and boy, she kept looking at me kind of funny. And, and I said, well, it's got a strainer in it. It did have a strainer. It was a nice one. Then. It had a strainer in it. I said, look, at it. it's got a strainer and everything. Trying to talk in and look at that. And about the time she opened the box, I said, <laughs> and that, that done it. I was out of the dollhouse for a long time with that. (laughs) But what I did was, see, church, love is good for the soul. Expressing your love is not a thing that we grow out of. We should grow into. We need to take time, and time spells love. We spell love T-I-M-E. Because let me tell you something. By responding in affection, instead of turning away and showing anger, we should show love. I want to just express this to you. A time to love, as we spoke of in Ecclesiastes 3.8, says love is limited by time. Love is limited. 
People that love each other should never take time, take time, um, never should take daily. Let me rephrase this. Never should go through a day without expressing their love. The Bible says never let you go to sleep on your wrath and your anger. There should never be a day when, when we as husbands or wives should um, feel unloved at the end of the day. Now, I want to say this to you because, listen, every one of us ne have no clue of when our life will be over. And, and we must seize every opportunity to share the love that we, that we have for each other. Some people say, well, I've been married for 50 years. She knows I love her. But you know what? Jesus died 2,000 years ago. Do you tell him you love him? Yeah. Yeah. We should share love. We should share the, the love, the greatest gift that Jesus, Jesus give us the greatest gift of all. He says, all you all that speak in tongues, that's going to go away. All you that prophesy, this, this is going to go. All this stuff is going to leave. But one thing will remain. And that is the love of Jesus. That is what will remain. And, and I want to reach the hearts of people this morning. Because as I look at my life, I look at the regret of being raised without a love. Don't, not, don't get me wrong. My family put a roof over our head. My daddy was a hardworking man. And my mama had a tough life. But she made the very best out of it for 85 years. But let me tell you what goes a long way, church. Telling somebody that you love them and you mean it. A child will starve to death emotionally if they are raised and not knowing that they are loved. You, you can be mad at your children and beat them with a backer stick. But before you do, say, I love you, but. Take time to share this love. See, we can't spare the time to hold grudges. We, we don't have the, the, the luxury of walking around saying, well, I'm just going to be mad and I'm, not gonna, I'm, I'm just not going to speak to them no more. I, I, I'll get over it one day. Listen, that one day is going to come when it's going to be your time to love has run out. I know for a fact that as this message and as we share that hate is destroying America. Hate is destroying relationships. You know, before you kind of judge your, your, your person, sometimes we need to go look in the mirror at ourselves and see maybe what's wrong with us. I, 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 me and a friend of mine was talking, and, you know, I, I, I've been, you know, I weren't saved all my life. And, and I was in my 30s, and, and I went through some bad relationships. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I thought I had found all the bad women in the world. But I kind of find that when I looked in the mirror, it might have not been them. I learned through this woman that love is what helps you become who you are. I, I'm saying this to you to tell you this. That love takes work. We think Valentine's is all about a box of candy. Of course, that's not a bad thing. Or roses. That, none of that's bad. But let me tell you what. It means nothing if there's not real love in your heart. We need to take time as to, what's the old saying? Take time to smell the roses. We need to take time to take advantage of circumstances in our life so that we won't sit back in and have regrets that we, that we have to live with because regret, regrets is like a disease. It will eat you away. It will destroy you. You know, and, and yet we have been given this gift of love. Do you know how powerful love is? Love will save the lost. Love will keep Satan from sending people to hell. Love will bring you from eternal damnation to eternal heaven. Love will stop wars. Love will stop destruction of relationships. 
Love will bring our children off of drugs and back on Jesus. I think if this nation quit getting addicted to drugs and get addicted to the love of Jesus, I believe we could see something change in this world. I believe the church would come back where it needs to be because people got saved because of love. They got saved because somebody showed them love. Somebody loved them to the altar. Somebody loved them out of their darkness. <coughs> I am so tired emotionally drained from trying to figure out how to fix people that refuse to accept the only thing that will fix them and that's Jesus church you don't need to be a theologian a Bible scholar to understand one thing Jesus said that Childlike faith, the simplicity of God's word, is love. Love is supposed to be celebrated every day. We need to learn that we don't have time to be angry. We don't have time to be bitter. We got time to love, and that's what the key is we need to learn to express it, and we need to start today. I am so disappointed in myself because I've come under the pressure of being raised in a setting that I was embarrassed or ashamed to share love. I know that I've asked God to give me a love. I've asked him, Lord, I said, I pray that you will give me a love for you, but better give me a love that you have for people. Amen. I said, because I don't want to see no one else leave this earth without that love. Amen. I want to see people leave this earth with the love of Jesus in them. Because, see, listen, when all the smoke clears and all is said and done, it's going to come right down to love. There's, we can mess up marriage counseling if we just start doing some Jesus counseling. Yeah. Yeah. If we would just put Jesus in charge of this instead of letting Satan have charge of this, yeah. then we could see something happen. Love is going to stop these killings. Love is the only thing that's going to protect us from being destroyed. Because the only thing that destroys Satan is love. The love of Jesus is powerful. And this morning, I know none of us in this room are where we need to be when it comes to that. And me at the top of the list. But I know that if I'm going to reach my family, it's going to have to be done with love. And I can't accomplish this if I don't let Jesus show me and work through me. You're trying to reach your family right now. You're trying to figure out why they're messed up. You're probably sitting here wondering, how in the world can I get rid of this hate? Hate is a demon. Yes. His job is to destroy you of the love of Jesus. This morning... We serve the same love in Jesus that went to that cross 2,000 years ago. We serve that same love in Jesus today. And that same love in Jesus is willing and, and quite capable of filling our hearts full of love for each other and for our loved ones so that we can be that shining light that reaches out. Church, let's stop going to funerals with regrets. Let's stop looking at why did my child go this way? Let's realize that we've already been given the power. And that power is love. So this altar today, let's ask God to saturate our hearts with the love we need. So that wherever we go, that that light is shining to such a lost and dying and dark world. 
that we will bring these children back to the, the one that created them, Jesus, before it's a time to love is over. Church, this altar is open. Come up here with your hearts. Ask God to fill it full of love.